Hey, check it out. I found poison ivy. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my woods. Today I want to take you out on a special adventure and we're going to go out and walk through the woods and identify some trees and show you some ways that you can use to identify trees. And I'm out here with my uh, son, Arthur. Say hi, Arthur. Hi. <laughs> and uh, the two of us are gonna have a little fun here. So let's go off into the woods and uh, see what we can see. So first of all, this is the absolute best time of the year to come out and identify trees. It is not winter yet. Uh, the leaves are still fairly green, but starting to change. Some of them starting to fall. There's fruit on the trees, fruit on the ground, and we can walk around and quickly and easily identify them. Now one I see right here is red oak. You can see how these have very pointy leaves. So here I have two trees right next to each other. This one right here and this one right here, and they both are oak trees. And they've become very, very obvious and easy to identify once you see them. Uh, the bark on these two is a little bit different. This one is older, so it's a little more shaggy, kind of harder to identify. Whereas this one you have a little bit more of that standard oak look. Uh, <laughs> let me take you over here and show you basically one of the reasons why this is a great time of year to come out and identify trees is you get to identify their fruit and their leaves that are down on the ground. So here I have, this is from the first one over on my right and this is from the one on the left. You can see how all these have rounded ends on them and then all of these have these pointy ends. The pointy are from the red oak, anything that's rounded are white oak. Also you can look at the acorn and the acorn from the red oak is usually a very smooth cap, um, not much identification to it. Whereas the white oak usually has either a very bumpy cap or it's a very hairy cap. Um, and a lot of times the hair will actually hang down over, especially with the bur oak and swamp oak. So let's go take a look at some others. Here's one that I like. This bark, it looks fairly similar to oak um, in many respects, but you'll see these leaves come off and it'll be a group of five leaves, um, five or uh, seven sometimes. Uh, like on this one, you can see how they bunch out more. Here's the ash leaf, and they come in these whole series. Um, you might think that those are um, seven leaves, but this is actually one leaf that joins back at the stem. Ash is a very easy one to identify by the leaf. So here's one that is a bit confusing. They may uh, look like ash leaves that we just looked at. They're clustered together in seven. They're from a single bunch on the stem, but they're not ash. This is actually a type of maple. It is a box elder. And after a little while, you're going to get very used to identifying box elder uh, by the branches and tree. You'll often see this very distinctive bark and all of these little sprigs coming off everywhere. That's a, a very common representation of box elder. Uh, very knotty, very twisty. It's not a hard maple, uh, but it is a really nice maple with a lot of color in it. Sometimes you get a red flame through it. Um, a very beautiful wood to work with and would make a great workbench in my mind. But yeah, box elder is a type of maple, um, often called ash leaf maple, because the leaves, well, they kind of have a, a look of ash to them. Another thing I'm doing is I'm walking along and I'm looking for acorns, I'm looking for nuts, I'm looking for leaves, and I'm starting to identify the leaves. Like uh, this one is a type of maple, that's a type of oak, and usually from the ground you can start to see where the leaves are, and then you can look up into the trees and find out where are they? Uh, is that, does that leaf look like the one I'm putting on the ground or does that leaf over there look like the one on the ground? And then from there you can identify the bark on the tree and say, oh, I know what that is now. So we've been looking at hardwoods, but here you have a couple softwoods. This is a, a fir, and then you come back over here and this is a bark that you'll know quite a bit. This is a, a pine tree. Um, and I don't know as much about them because I don't use the wood as much and they don't interest me as much. But one of the things that's actually kind of fun for me are the needles, um, particularly from the white pine, because they're very long needles like that. And you'll find that they each have five sprigs, which is white, W-I-T-E, five letters, five sprigs, a fairly easy one to identify and uh, one of my favorite pines. Okay, here's one that I really like. You'll find these heart-shaped leaves and they fall in great clumps. They don't change color that much and they just, they clutter the ground. And you're also gonna find these sticks that have a lot of nubs and nobbles on them. And uh, these sticks are very telltale of cottonwood. So let's look around here. We found these all over the ground 
and we're going to look around for usually a very large tree and voila there it is this has a lot of um, bark twisting on it um, they in, usually end up having a very very straight long trunk all the way up and you can see that they have a very large canopy most of the time uh, it's cottonwood in early spring their seed will come floating down through the air in little tufts of cotton but uh, they are very very easy to identify in the fall or anytime by these leaves um, not too many trees have leaves um, like these uh, heart-shaped cottonwood leaves like uh, that right there so here's one of my favorites you'll be walking along the path and you'll come across these nuts they're kind of split four ways the husk falls off very easily and then you'll have these white nuts underneath these are hickory nuts and hickory is one of my favorite woods beautiful beautiful wood extremely hard great for axe handles and anything you don't want to break um, just a, a great great wood all around but one of the cool things about it is the bark is very easy to identify the bark here is actually this kind of shaggy thing that well it just like these pieces will flake off and this is a hickory tree now if you go all the way up then you get this almost uh, these things are huge and I'm trying to find one here on the ground uh, but they're about 12 inches long so each one of those are about a foot long they're huge huge leaves and you can see that each one of them has a cluster of three and then the stem coming off that's one leaf is that cluster of three and the stem um, and this one over here has five and one long stem so they're a very beautiful tree a great wood to work with and uh, a lot of fun when you identify them plus hickory nuts taste good and uh, you can take those home and have fun with them so yeah I'm always finding these when I'm out running in the woods you will stumble across them and it's a very obvious point that there's a hickory tree here so here's another one you're gonna find these oval leaves um, quite often I'll be looking around and there's one here and one here and there's another one over here and then here and here and they're they're fairly oval some of them have a very fine sawtooth like this one some of them have a very pronounced sawtooth but then you also see these trees that if you didn't know any better you'd swear they were a pine tree they kind of have that shaggy bark that you see very commonly in pine trees that is actually a cherry tree and a cherry is a fantastic hardwood for hand tools um, just a, a beautiful beautiful wood with a dark red color and one of my favorites but yeah you'll be looking along the, along the floor and you'll come across all these little yellow tiny little leaves like uh, that one there and that one there they're cherry leaves now here's another one I want to identify this isn't a tree but if you're wandering around the woods it's a good one to know and you'll see these three leaves here and often they look like a mitten and the one in the one in the middle will have a thumb on both sides whereas the one on the outside will just have a thumb on the outside that is poison ivy and uh, yeah don't go rubbing in that <laughs> yeah you'll, you'll find this all over the place so poison ivy poison ivy poison ivy poison ivy yep when you're wandering the woods that's a good one to know okay here's a fun one so you're walking around the woods and you find this hickory nut and a little while later you find this one and you think oh, is that a black walnut no it's a hickory nut if you look closely it's got this X cross section at the top it's just one that hasn't turned black yet hadn't gotten soft so you can pop off the uh, the husk a walnut though a black walnut looks like this a little smaller than a baseball when they come down they're green and then they slowly turn black and then eventually the black all falls off and you'll see this traditional or like a walnut inside the leaves look kind of like an ash leaf and that they're all one big piece and they have these sprigs that come off but they're very hairy they're fuzzy and they have this like characteristic to them the center of the stick is very pithy and then the bark is very easy to identify um, it comes like this you see this this crisscross x shape on the bark and that is very uh, characteristic of a walnut tree and so you know this right behind the bark there's a bit of a white wood the sap wood and then inside of it you're gonna have that very very dark walnut wood and then the very core you're gonna have almost this almost empty core running all the way up the middle in the heart of the tree so yeah um, when you're running through the woods you're gonna come across these nuts and they become a problem for stepping on because you step on them you roll uh, but this is black walnut and uh, once you start to identify it you'll be very very happy you did because everybody likes black walnut now here's one that I should know it has a sawtooth leaf and all the spines come back to the central point um, as opposed to all coming to the base they all come back to the main spine 
and I'm seeing this tree quite often and I've seen these leaves a lot. Uh, they are all over the place and you can get a closer look at uh, what the canopy looks like, well, kind of. <laughs> um, but these leaves are just covering the trees and they're all over the ground. So when I get back to my house, I'll show you how I look that up and identify the tree. So now let me take you to a few sites and apps that I use to help me find what is this plant? What is this tree? And my first and foremost is the Arbor Day Foundation, um, arborday.org. And I'll leave a link to all of these apps and websites down below so you can go and look at that. And this one is, is very good, uh, particularly if you live in the U.S. or Canada, um, at finding native trees. And so it's you know asking you, are you in the West Coast or in the East Coast? Um, and, and picking from there. If you're not in North America, um, then you're, you're, this is going to be a little bit more difficult for you, but it's still, uh, still fairly doable because it does have trees that aren't just in North America, although it is designed for the native trees to North America. So this will basically then go through, you know, is it an Eastern, is it uh, needles? Does it have cones? Is it a regular leaf? Um, is it a, a standard leaf or is it a compound leaf? Uh, you know, it's a standard leaf. Um, are the leaves directly across the stem or are they um, alternating across the stem? And you can go on down through this and it will give you more and more ideas about what it is until eventually you come to it. This particular one is a little bit deeper down. Um, so rather than dragging you through that, I'll just take you to the answer. It's an elm tree, um, particularly a rock elm. And this is a um, this is a fairly common one around here. This is actually what my table is going to be made out of. Uh, my dining room table I'll be making here soon. Uh, very easily notified by the uh, the paper seeds. You'll find the seed in the middle of the paper, um, and it's a, a fairly common tree around here. Uh, then the other place that I often go to and I want to find out more information about it is Wiki. Um, the, a ton of information on there for you know more information about what the tree is from, um, history of the name, uh, history about the tree that might be used in different things, far more specifics about where is it located, uh, where is it commonly found. Um, other uses for it and things like that. This is a, Wiki is a great place. Um, Google search in general, if you're looking for information um, or you kind of know what it is and you're looking for, you know, it's an elm tree, but what type of elm is it? You know, I'll look up elm tree types, leaves, and it'll give me pictures of all of those and I can kind of match them up and get a better idea from that. Another one that I use all the time is British Trees. Uh, this is an app you can put on your phone. Uh, it is focused on trees in Britain. But I'll even find native trees from America listed there, except for they'll be listed as ornamental trees um, or trees that have been transplanted to the garden as opposed to native trees. And this one is, is great because it's far easier to get around than the, uh, the Arbor Day because there's pictures for everything. Um, so if you're trying to find something, this is, this is an app that I use all the time. Um, this is the one I probably use on the fly the most. Then uh, probably the easiest of all of them is PlantNet. Um, with an at symbol in plant. Um, and this one is is so simple because you just take a picture of the tree itself. Uh, you take a picture of the leaf or the bud or the fruit, and it goes through the algorithm and tries to figure out just from the picture itself. So it's kind of reading the picture. It's very quick, very easy. And it gives you a general idea. At least it gives you to a point where you can jump off and you can go and you can Google or you have more information when you go to Arbor Day to, uh, to look it up. So these are the ones that I use the most. Uh, I, I I really don't use that much more. And if I can't find it from these, then I post a picture on social media and say, hey, does anyone out there know what this is? And usually someone's gonna be telling me by the end of the day. So there you have it. Next time you're wandering around in the woods, you know exactly how to look up and find out, well, what is that tree? What is that nut I find? I, I definitely say go out and explore. The only way you're gonna get good at learning what trees are out there is to go out and to experiment, to find out the tree and uh, to learn. And even if you run into problems and you can't find it online, you can't find it on the apps and you have no idea what this is, Post a picture of the leaf on, uh, on Instagram or um, social media and ask people, hey, anyone have an idea what this is? Uh, that's a great way to learn as well. So I hope you like this. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are really the reason why I can keep putting out videos like this. If you'd like to see more like this, you can help out with Patreon or find out more about it right down here. Also, if you'd like to subscribe or uh, see some behind the scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day.